Hi everyone and welcome back to LearnNeuroRadiology.com. I'm Brent Weinberg and I'm going to be your host today. We have an exciting and interactive topic today where we're going to learn together how to approach a CT angiogram of the head and neck. This is one of the more common exams in neuroradiology, so it's going to be really important for you to understand how to approach these going forward. I'm going to give you an interactive normal example where you can load it yourself and follow along as you go. So you can learn how to be a pro when it comes to sitting down and taking a look at these from start to finish. So without further ado, let's get started. So as I mentioned, the goal of today is going to be to teach you how to read a CT angiogram of the head and neck. And you can do that through a few simple steps. Uh, so now we're going to go uh, through those. Uh, so why do we do CT angiograms? Most of the time we're doing them to look for occlusion or narrowing of the vessels to evaluate for stroke or for TIA symptoms or to evaluate areas of narrowing that are already known. Sometimes people have aneurysms or they have a history of a headache and we're looking for aneurysms, so that can be a thing. Uh, sometimes we're also looking for vascular malformations or uh, other vascular anomalies such as dural AV fistulas. So sometimes we want to look for those things. Uh, in general, my pattern is to look at the non-vascular structures first. So it's nice to go ahead and look at the lungs, the bones, the thyroid, kind of get those things out of the way, and then divide your study into the neck and then the head. So kind of look at the bottom half and then the top half. And I'll show you guys how to do that as we go through. Now you're going to make four passes through each segment. So you're going to look at each vessel separately. And that's what it really takes to be able to see all of the abnormalities. I take a look at the anterior circulation first, and I look at it from right to left. So I look at the right internal carotid, then the left, and then the right uh, vertebral artery, and then the left. So that's what I recommend for, uh, for you guys as well. Uh, now I have some sample cases for you guys to look through if you want to follow this link. Uh, it's bit.ly slash CTA course, and that has some cases, a normal case and uh, some abnormal cases that you guys can look through. Uh, for this video today, we're going to be looking through the normal case. And uh, that normal case you can find, uh, it's at a similar link here. It's a bit.ly slash CTA normal uh, like this. So if you want to follow along and try this on your own, you can go to that and you'll be able to follow through with this interactive case. If you follow that link in your browser, it's going to take you to this page on LearnerRadiology.com, which is our website, and you'll see this page for the vascular capstone course. Uh, here it gives you a little bit of uh, in information about each case, and what we're going to focus on today is the normal case. Uh, but here you can see like a little bit of uh, information about the case. This is a 31-year-old or 30-year-old woman who had a cervical spine fracture after a trauma, and uh, she had a CT angiogram to look for vascular injuries. So what we can do is click here where it says normal case, and it's going to open a separate window, which has a PAX-like interface where we can see uh, what, what we're looking at. Uh, depending on your internet speed, it's going to take a little bit of time for that to come through. But uh, then once it's come up, you can scroll through these cases uh, as if you're sitting at a PAX station. And so we have the axial images here in the top left. We have a uh, reformatted uh, kind of spin MIPS here, so you can see uh, in 3D what things look like. And then the bottom corners, we have some oblique images through the uh, right uh, internal carotid here and carotid bifurcation, as well as the left carotid bifurcation here as well. But today we're really going to focus on the axial images. So what you need to do is uh, just double click those. It's going to open a new window for you where you can see uh, the axial images in a bigger window. And you've got some tools up here in the, uh, in the right. So you can click on the window and you can change your windowing. And what I do first, as I mentioned, is I look at all of the non-vascular structures. So we're going to take a look at the lungs here and make sure we're not looking at any uh, lung masses or we don't have any big lung nodules. You see a little emphysema here uh, along the uh, periphery of the lung here at the lung apex, a few like little blebs there, uh, but not too much to worry about, not anything that we're really worried about. Uh, we can now window this more to look at the soft tissues here. And I like to check the soft tissues as they go up. We'll pick this tool so we can kind of scroll quickly. Uh, we want to look at some key structures like the thyroid, make sure there's not a thyroid mass or any big thyroid nodules. Uh, we want to check the lymph node chains on either side to see if there's any abnormal lymph nodes. We should check the aerodigestive tract, make sure we're not looking at any masses of the you know, oropharynx or uh, tongue base. Kind of take a, be on the lookout for those. And uh, as we come up, then be looking for any abnormal enhancement uh, particularly in the brain, like because a lot of these patients have neurologic symptoms, we don't want to miss a mass in the brain. So be sure that we're scanning the cranial vault for any enhancing masses. 
anything that looks like a tumor or anything like that. Uh, finally, I like to uh, window for the bones. And so I kind of window it out a little bit, take a look at the bones, make sure that we don't have any osseous lesions, any destructive lesions, any pathologic fractures, or anything like that as we scroll through. And I said this patient had a trauma, so this is the traumatic fracture there that's going through uh, one of those cervical vertebral bodies. We're not really going to emphasize that today, but you do want to be on the lookout for those things. Uh, so be aware of the history and be aware of what you're looking for in those. Uh, once we're happy with all of that, then we're going to come back down to the origins of the vessels here. We can window back out and uh, for vascular structures, and then we're going to start our vascular search. Now, as we kind of talked about, when we start with the neck, what we're going to do is we're going to make four passes through the neck. We're going to first look at the right anterior structures, being the common carotid and uh, internal carotid. We'll look at the left anterior structures here, so the uh, carotid's on the left. Then we'll move to the posterior and we'll look at the right vertebral artery and the left vertebral artery. So we'll make four passes through the neck, starting from the bottom. So as I said, now we're starting from the bottom and we're here at the aortic arch here. So you can see this is the ascending aorta. The arch comes across to the descending aorta. I wanna window this so we can see the center of these vessels uh, pretty well. We're gonna to switch to this scrolling tool now and we're gonna start scrolling upward uh, through this. And we're gonna see the origins of the great vessels and this is a normal arch origin. So you normally have three vessels. You have the brachiocephalic artery here uh, the left common carotid artery here and the left subclavian artery. So we see those are the normal um, origins of the great vessels. And as you come up, what you're going to see the subclavian comes across to this side and it's going to give off the right common carotid artery, which is here. And then your vertebral arteries are going to come off of either subclavian. So you have the left vertebral artery coming off there and the right vertebral artery coming off there. So that's our four main vessels, which we're going to take a look at. And we want to start by uh, taking this common carotid artery and then following it up. So we're going to move towards the head and we want to kind of follow it with our eyes. So we're going to just keep uh, following it here. We want to make sure there's nothing uh, abnormal in the lumen. We may window this a little bit so we can see the lumen a little better. We want to make sure there's nothing uh, causing a diameter change. We want to make sure there's no abnormalities in the wall, uh, no abnormal calcification. And then we come up and we get to this, which is the carotid bifurcation. And here we have the external carotid artery and the internal carotid artery. We know this is the external because it has all of these branches to the face and they're gonna come anteriorly into the face. Whereas if we keep going up, this internal carotid artery is gonna come up and enter the petrous canal uh, to become the intracranial components of the internal carotid artery. So uh, we follow that and it looks okay. Now we want to pay special attention here to the bifurcation. This is the most common places where we'll have some abnormalities. Here there's a tiny little bit of abnormal calcification there, but uh, not really anything causing any narrowing, no uh, abnormalities in the vessel lumen or, or anything like that. So we're pretty, pretty happy with that. Once we're finished with that right one, we wanna now go back down to our arch. We're gonna follow this all the way down. We'll come back to where it uh, rises from the aortic arch and then go from there. So we have this left common carotid artery and we'll just follow it up the same way. So as it goes up, we're just kind of scrolling up and uh, we're gonna follow this as it goes. Again, looking for any outpouchings, any areas where there's uh, caliber changes or abnormalities in the wall uh, or any, uh, any other vascular anomalies like clots within the vessel. Again, we get to the bifurcation here and we see the external carotid, the internal carotid coming posteriorly here and it's gonna come up to the skull base here and uh, then enter the petrous canal right here. So we're pretty happy with the anterior circulation. We've looked at the right and left internal and common carotids. And then uh, to complete our pattern within the neck, we're gonna then come back to the right and we're gonna follow this right vertebral artery. So the vertebral artery comes off here. It's gonna spend a few uh, centimeters outside of the uh, spinal canal. And then it's gonna briefly enter this little notch that it has for itself called the transverse foramen. And that sits behind the transverse process and kind of protects the vessel. And as you scroll up, you're gonna see it stays within that canal for several vertebral levels. And as it comes up, it's then going to exit uh, the transverse foramen here. It's gonna make a little loop uh, coming posteriorly before uh, becoming the intracranial vertebral artery. And we wanna follow that loop closely. 
make sure we don't see any abnormal outpouchings there, any uh, abnormal lines in the lumen of the vessel to be a dissection. And this is going to come up and become the intracranial uh, right vertebral artery. And then we just do the same thing with uh, the left vertebral artery. So we'll start back here at the bottom. We're starting at its subclavian origin. As it comes up here, what you're going to see is it'll enter that transverse foramen about right here, which is great. I'm going to stop and point out a finding here when it comes uh, when it comes through. Uh, so this patient had been in a trauma, and uh, the worry was that she might have a vascular injury uh, because of this trauma. If I window it a little bit there, you can actually see there's a fracture through this vertebral body here. So that's why they were worried that there was a vascular injury. And you can see why, because the vertebral artery is very close to that uh, to that level. We know it was a high energy trauma, so we want to make sure that that vessel is not injured. Uh, but as we look at that level, the caliber is normal. We don't see any lines through there to be a traumatic dissection or a traumatic arterial injury. Uh, so that's going to be normal. We just keep following that up and uh, until again, it's going to exit the transverse foramen here, kind of make a loop and uh, come posteriorly before becoming the intradural uh, vertebral artery or kind of the distal segment of the vertebral artery. Once we've looked at those four vessels, then we've kind of completed our search through the neck and then we'll move on to take a look at the vessels within the head. Now, once we've finished our search of the neck, we move on to the head and we're going to follow a similar pattern. We're going to do an anterior to posterior and then right to left. So we'll start with anterior and we'll cover those anterior structures, including the internal carotid artery, the anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral arteries. We'll see those anterior structures on the right. Then we'll move to the left and look at the same structures before then going posteriorly looking at the vertebral artery and the basilar artery, and uh, then the right uh, posterior cerebral artery. Uh, before then moving to the left, we'll check the vertebral artery and the left uh, posterior cerebral artery as well, We're kind of passing by the basilar artery again as we go. So let's take a look at that now. So now we've moved on and we're starting at the base of the skull to approach the head, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna work uh, anterior to posterior, right to left, and we're gonna start with the internal carotid artery on the right. We'll follow it up and it's going to pass through the Petrus Canal. So here we see it going through the Petrus Canal. And when it gets through the Petrus Canal, it's going to turn anteriorly or ventrally and become the cavernous carotid artery. And then uh, it's going to come around here before becoming the ophthalmic portion of the internal carotid artery. And then where it makes that U-turn there, you're going to see the ophthalmic artery coming off and supplying the eye. So that's why it's called the ophthalmic segment. And then you'll get into the terminal carotid here which is gonna terminate and it's gonna bifurcate into two vessels, the right MCA or middle cerebral artery and the ACA or anterior cerebral artery, which comes here. And now's your time to really follow those vessels and follow the MCA here, follow the MCA branches as it comes out into the cilia and fissure. Now you can't possibly follow all of those, but uh, you can get an idea for if the distribution is roughly symmetric with the contralateral side. And then if you're looking for a stroke, you may be looking for any early truncations there. And do the same thing with the anterior cerebral artery then. Follow it here and uh, take a look here as it comes uh, anteriorly. And uh, it's gonna come uh, become the anterior cerebral artery. You have the anterior communicating artery, a little nub in there, uh, where the two anterior cerebral arteries uh, communicate uh, together. And it's just gonna come up in the midline here and just uh, follow those kind of as they go up. Uh, when you're happy with that, uh, we are pretty happy with the right anterior circulation. And then come back down to the base, and so we're going to come back down to the skull base and do the same thing with our left internal carotid artery, which starts here, goes through the Petrus Canal, and does the same thing. So it turns anteriorly to become the cavernous carotid, ophthalmic carotid, and carotid terminus, and then is going to bifurcate into two vessels, uh, the MCA, which we can follow up here. Uh, through the cilia fissure, again, looking for any abnormal vessels, uh, any abnormal truncation, so vessels that stop abruptly, uh, like an occlusion, and then follow the ACA up here as it goes towards the midline. This is the A1 segment, and this is the more distal segments here, and it's going to come up along the falks in the midline. Once we're happy with the anterior circulation, we want to do the same thing with the posterior circulation. So we're going to come back down to the skull base, and just take a look here. We'll start with this vertebral artery. Uh, so this is the right vertebral artery. And we're gonna see a little branch come off here. That's the pica or posterior inferior cerebellar artery. It's gonna come up 
and it's going to join the other vertebral artery to become the basilar artery. Now somewhere in there, I think maybe right here, we saw another branch. That's the anterior inferior cerebellar artery. And uh, as we come up, the basilar is going to come up and they're going to have the terminal branches here. Uh, the second to last branch is going to be the SCA or superior cerebellar artery. And one on each side is going to kind of wrap around the brainstem there. And then it's going to make a Y-shaped bifurcation into two posterior cerebral arteries. As you see one on the right here, this vessel you see right here is the posterior communicating artery. And that goes off to the right here and wraps around the brainstem here and supplies the posterior circulation of the posterior part of the cerebral hemisphere. Uh, once we're happy with the right, we'll come back down. We'll take a look at the left here. And here we have the left uh, vertebral artery. It's going to come up and uh, it's going to join the basilar artery. So we see the basilar again and we kind of follow it up. And then we're going to see this left posterior cerebral artery. It's going to wrap around. Again, you see this tiny little vessel here. That's your left posterior communicating artery. So that completes your circle of Willis there. And then your PCA is going to wrap around the brain stem and uh, again, supply the posterior circulation here. Now, quick uh, once over, like once I've kind of finished all of those things, I take a quick look at the cerebral venous structure. So the dural venous sinuses, namely the superior sagittal sinus, and it's going to come down here and become the torcula as it meets the straight sinus. And it's going to bifurcate then into two transverse sinuses. And uh, then you have a left sigmoid sinus and a right sigmoid sinus that are going to become the, ju the jugular veins, respectively. Uh, so take a quick look at those as well when you're looking at your CT angiograms. We'll take a look at those in more detail on a CT venogram uh, lecture at some point. Uh, but that's basically all you need to look at for uh, your CTA of the head and neck. So that kind of summarizes the imaging findings that you need to see. So in summary, we've taken a look at what general approach you might have to looking at a CT angiogram of the head and neck. When you're taking a look at this, it's good to have an idea of what you're looking for and what kind of pathologies you might see. You might see narrowing or occlusion, aneurysm or vascular malformation. Uh, you'll do yourself a favor if you divide it into segments. So take a look at the lower neck and upper head in uh, different segments, and then take four separate passes like through as you look at things, uh, go from anterior to posterior and then right to left. Uh, so that you're seeing all of the vascular structures. So hopefully this has given you a little bit of an idea of how you might approach a CTA of the head and neck and uh, where to go from here. Uh, we're going to have more videos as we take a look at some of those abnormal cases. I want to say thanks and uh, to everyone for tuning into this video. Please take a look at our other videos and uh, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy it. And we'll have more videos as we go forward. Thank you guys.